Okay, so without any further delay, I want to introduce our sponsor of uh, today's workshop. It's uh, uh, Tony Guy Robertson from the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, and he's going to get us all started. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, thank you for the introduction. My name's Tony Guy Robertson. I'm a R&D scientist uh, within the research directorate at NGA. And uh, many of you may not have even heard of NGA because I certainly hadn't heard of it uh, before I went to a conference and saw a booth there and then applied for a job. So uh, if many of you are in the same boat as I, 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 I will uh, definitely impress to you why, why NGA itself is interested in things like groundwater uh, recharge. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to introduce to you our customers. Our customers are going to be the warfighter and the policymaker. So we are a member of both the Department of Defense and the intelligence community, uh, which means that we uh, support both, uh, both of those mission spaces, uh, and we do that by pro providing uh, what's called uh, geospatial intelligence. Uh, this is uh, also known as GEOINT. And uh, simply put, GEOINT is really just the description of uh, imagery and other geospatially related data in a way that provides uh, and describes the uh, physical and natural and uh, man-made environment. And so the purpose of this workshop is looking really at uh, the uh, you know, natural you know, groundwater environment. And you may be wondering why are we really interested in groundwater itself? Uh, uh, Venkat made uh, uh, quite a few uh, uh, statements earlier about really the uh, different uh, news articles that have been going around. And so I pulled up a couple of, uh, of uh, fairly recent, uh, whoops, did I go, or not? Oh, uh, some fairly recent um, uh, news articles uh, that are uh, touching on water, uh, groundwater and water quality. And one of the real things that pops out here recently is that just the number of, of really international treaties that are uh, governing uh, transnational uh, groundwater aquifers is really very few, right? So one of the uh, things that uh, we, since we advise policymakers that we're really looking for is provide them uh, some feedback uh, because these are uh, opportunities for both conflict but also cooperation. These are areas that we can provide, uh, the U.S. government can provide, uh, you know, support, diplomatic support to, to nations to help uh, be able to, to provide the information. And a lot of the reason why these, these uh, transnational water, uh, these transnational aquifer um, don't get wrapped into these international treaties is just a lack of information, right? We don't know where uh, these groundwater aquifers really extend to. We don't understand how they're being recharged. So it's very difficult to partition these, uh, these water rights. And so by be being able to provide uh, information to our policymakers, to provide this information uh, for those diplomatic missions definitely is something that we're looking for to be able to help improve our engagement across, uh, across the world. Um, we can also uh, look at things uh, from an individual nation state uh, uh, concern because these uh, groundwater aquifers can have uh, a direct Im impact on uh, nation state stability as well. In many cases, um, a lot of, uh, as also alluded to, is that we're now starting to uh, actually mine fossil water, which means that we're now removing water that is no longer, or overusing water in areas that will not be available for future generations. And this is going to be uh, potential flashpoints as water, these water sources become depleted, and run the risk of being uh, run the risk of uh, of having instability within these nations themselves. And lastly, the the one thing I do want to also highlight is also not only are we interested in the qual uh, quantity of the water, but we're also interested in the quality of the water itself. It's uh, one thing. Uh, uh, to be able to understand where the water is, but we also want to be able to know that's useful for things like, uh, you know, personal uh, consumption, you know, agricultural and industrial uses. So we want to be able to understand that. And if we look here, this is just one example of an article that talked about radiation being found in the Nubian uh, aquifer, but there are plenty of other examples when we look at um, things like biocontaminants and heavy metal contamination aquifers. Uh, uh, one real simple example. Uh, where uh, the subsurface geology really matters is that if you have, uh, if you look at um, like fecal bacteria contamination, uh, that uh, risk is reduced if you increase the residence time within the aquifer itself. However, then you run the risk also of then now arsenic contamination, right? The heavy metals leaching into the water. So you have to balance and understand where the, you know, 
understand the, uh, the dynamics of the, of the aquifer itself to understand what the risk of water quality is as well. Um, so this is kind of the, the understanding of, of where uh, we see this in, in the public, but how does that really relate to our customers, right? I said our customers are the warfighters and the policymakers. And when we talk about the warfighters, uh, one great uh, case example is the, uh, the first Gulf War. Uh, what we had was we had a lot of troops go in there. They were trying to access groundwater sources and determine that the water quality, so just the, the, the issue that I mentioned, was not good enough for uh, a lot of what they're looking at. So what they ended up having to do is uh, use desalinization and also uh, create a whole logis logistical network to bring water in from external sources. So there's a, there's a, a huge interest in being able to plan uh, for where these resources are from an operational support, uh, support for the, for the warfighter. Uh, but we also, um, uh, the, war, uh, the warfighter also does, uh, dip, uh, you know, diplomatic uh, missions in, in, in country in places like Iraq and Afghanistan where we help rebuild that water infrastructure uh, for local populations and improve that. So there's a, there's a humanitarian uh, mission that we do that. And NGA supports these missions by providing, uh, we have uh, personnel that sit in, 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 uh, in with these combat commands that provide these, uh, this geoant, this geospatial intelligence to the, to the warfighter and being able to provide better information to these uh, support teams is what we're really looking for uh, today. So in addition to, to the warfighter, we also have these support teams in other areas in the U.S. government uh, working with other teams to provide uh, assistance to the humanitarian and disaster relief efforts. So we do work with other partner uh, 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 agencies and, and, and the U.S. government to provide uh, GEOINT and provide intelligence that they can then be able to work uh, with their partners and provide better use uh, for information there. Um, with that, uh, hopefully uh, I'm able to provide some context for us to be very productive here over the next two days. Um, I'm really looking forward to the uh, uh, to everybody's collective uh, intellect on this and I really appreciate everybody's patience uh, dealing with the uh, having to have the delay from uh, you know January to, to June, so I really appreciate the interest and in everybody's attendance here today is uh, very exemplary of the the interest and the, the desire to really kind of move the needle and prove this. Uh, what we're really looking for from an NGA perspective is that kind of three to seven year uh, research window. What we're really interested in is what can we. Um, what could NGA put resources towards uh, if, we, uh, if we were able to, to, to fund something uh, that could be done in a research that helps these customers, right? These are our warfighters. These are our policymakers that we want to be able to assist. What can we do to be able to get that done? Uh, with that, um, I'd like to turn it back over to Venkat. So, but thank you for your time, and I, I look forward to a great meeting.